Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, and welcome back. This is one of my archive series where I talk to an artist, and this one is recorded on my phone, over the phone, uh, with John McPhee of the Doobie Brothers back in August 2nd, 2019. And John talks a little bit about an upcoming Doobie tour, also the EP they were working on at the time. So I think it's interesting. I think you'll enjoy it. And again, there's no video to it. It's just audio, but enjoy. Thanks. Oh, this is great, John. Thank you for giving me a call back. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to ask you a few questions about the upcoming tour, which I think you start in two days. And then I'll probably dip back a little bit into some of the Doobie Brothers past that you've been involved with, and then talk about the new upcoming EP, which you uh, guys have talked about a little bit. Is that okay? Okay, sure. And feel free to stop me at any time. You have, you have 15 minutes, is that right? Yeah. Okay, then I'll uh, get on with it. And, 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 and if you need a little more, uh, I, I appreciate that. So you guys just finished a few weeks ago the tour with Santana, and you're about to go out again with Santana. Is that right? That is correct, yes. Um, how will this summer's uh, run look different than the last last run with Santana? Uh, than the one we just did? Yep. You mean, or, or did in previous year? The one you just did. For, okay. Uh, well, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we, uh, well, it, it's different all the time because, you know, uh, there are certain, some nights that, that Pat or Tom or myself or, or all three of us or other guys in the band fit in with Carlos oh, for wow. a song or two or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a certain amount of jamming going on and things like that. So there, and we do change our stuff up a little bit from, you know, from show to show, and, uh, and, um, you know, so it, it's just kind of like one of those things where, you know, every night's a little different. <laughs> right. And, uh, but it, it's really been great, though, because, uh, you know, all the, the band, all the, all the personnel, everybody really gets along. We've worked so many times with these people, and, uh, you know, we've even had so incredible people perform with us. We've hired them at different times for, Right. And then I think later in the summer, you're going to be going out as a headline uh, act. In fact, I'm going to see you guys when you get down here in Atlanta. Will that tour, okay. the summer tour, be, uh, will you be doing the Captain of Me in Toulouse Street or will it be a, a mix of different things? Well, we are, uh, you know, because of the length of doing both of those albums and, and some of the other stuff that we kind of have to play. <laughs> Songs like Blackwater, which was not really part of those two albums. Sure. Um, we, you know, we can't, we're not really doing those two albums in their entirety every night. We're doing okay. some special shows with those. You know, like what we did at the Beat and, 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 you know, having a heart with us and things like that. But we are incorporating a lot of those songs in our regular shows, and that gives us some really pretty cool, you know, switchable from night to night material to use as well, because some of our shows, the promoters, you know, it's slated to be a certain length of time, so you can't always fit the whole, you know, <laughs> the entire thing into uh, some of these shows, but, but yeah. you'll be hearing some of those songs at, at, at any show, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think you are probably... I think Pat is the only member of the Doobie Brothers I've seen every time. And I've seen you probably more than any other member of the Doobie Brothers. Um, uh -huh. so well, I guess your luck ran out then. <laughs> well, one thing that I'm always amazed by, by you, your playing is your versatility, not only guitar, but of course, uh, pedal steel and dobro and violin. And, and on, the, on the live album from the Beacon, you also throw in cello there. Um, right. will, you, will you have an opportunity to do some uh, use some additional inf instruments on this tour, on the headline tour? Uh, depending on the, 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 the set list on a given night, because like Captain and Me, for example, I actually play banjo as well. So right. if we play that particular song, I play a banjo. And so it depends on the set list. But yeah, the chances are you'll see me maybe playing some instruments that you haven't seen me play necessarily. You know, it's just uh, over the years, I mean, the set list changes and, you know, my involvement, I'm, I'm like just, I consider myself a team player and I'll say, okay, what do you guys, what should I be doing? Mm -hmm. You know, try to do, to do the job that, that helps, you know, helps the team, yeah. 
But, but since we originally joined the band, which I think was in 79, obviously the configuration has changed a lot. I mean, it was from 79 to 82, and you came back in 93. Um, how has your, your role in terms of a player changed since your first um, tenure with the band? Well, when I first came into the band, like you point out, it was in the late 70s, and it was a Tommy wasn't really there all the time, or most of the time, and and, uh, and Michael McDonald was, uh, you know, a, a big focus of our shows, and the, and the, the you know, minute by minute was taking off and peaking, and <laughs> so it, it was the McDonald era, and, and uh, so it was, the music was a little different, and, um, but, but, you know, in, in some ways I see my role as pretty much the same as far as, like, you know, trying to enhance and, and uh, be, be a, like I say, a team player. To, to, I'm lucky, you know, growing up, I, I had a lot of instruments around. I, I loved experimenting on all the different instruments. So it evolved to where, okay, you need that, I'll, I'll play that. <laughs> and uh, th that part of my role has always been the same. So it just depends on the material more than anything else. But... Uh, but it's been really great. I mean, I like I feel like right now I don't, I don't think the band's ever been playing any better. I've got Billy Kane on keyboards, and he's playing on a lot of the original recordings, like Santa Grove and Rockin' on the High. I've been on almost every TV Brothers album actually. But mm -hmm. so Billy has never been with us live the last couple of years, and with Mark Russo on saxophone, he's incredible. And mm -hmm. you know, we got you know Jeff both great drummer, John Allen, great bass player, a singer. And, uh, you know, all, all the guys, and, the, and this last couple of years also, Mark Quinone, who played with the Allman Brothers for over many years. Amazing. Great great. Allman, and he's been playing with us for So mm -hmm. it's a really, it's really, really exciting to put the stage to stay. Oh, absolutely. Um, one, of the, one of your roles for um, One Step Closer and even sibling rivalry was your your input in terms of your songwriting. I think in one step closer, you wrote um, the title track and also the instrumental with Chet McCracken. And then on sibling rivalry, one of the better songs of the album, Angels of Madness, you not only wrote that, but you sang lead on that. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess one of one of the things that I was hoping for with the last full album was some writing and vocal input from you, lead vocal input from you. Um, you didn't have that there. Um, for the <laughs> for the, the EP, are you planning on singing or writing any songs, co-writing any songs? Well, so far, you know, we've, we've been working on this EP. We've got a material. And what it's been focused on so far is uh, Tom and Cass writing. And they got together with our, the producer, John Sank, Southern Pacific, I got a chance to see the band when you had uh, Dave Jenkins in it. It's the only time oh, I got right. to see the band, but even the song, it was, I think it was Kill Billy Hill album. And uh -huh. even, your vocals were still, I mean, the fantastic, and the guitar parts on that album are so amazing. <laughs> and that's well, the one I still you. listen to today. Wow. Well, thank you. I think it was 
So in some ways, you can that I do. So I do like kind of like this. It's just this helicopter in the style of guitar. That's my room. That's how you feel in so many ways. And, uh, you know, Yeah, absolutely. And with World Gone Crazy, you you even though you didn't write for the album, you did a lot of the uh, some of the engineering for some of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, right. And you have engineered yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that project ended up being recorded at my my studio. Right. Even though we started cutting tracks at Sunset Sound and in Los Angeles studios, but you know we ended up doing a lot of uh, a lot of the work too at my place. So. And I think a few years, maybe it was three or four years ago, John Cowan re released a solo album, um, mm -hmm. which you had co-produced right. as well, which was, I mean, the, the, his vocals obviously are amazing. And he's a strong, strong bass player. But his, but yeah. it was the way you capture that was fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, that was, his album was entitled uh, 60, because that was the year he was turning 60. Right, right, right. And, uh, but it was a, what a great honor to, that John asked me to produce him. I mean, my God, he's such a, he's a guy that I've always really looked up to and from New Grass Revival and such an incredible singer and uh, a great player. But, but to, to get the work with John on that, we had a lot of fantastic guests mm -hmm. involved with that project too. So that was a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of that, that project now. Yeah. Are you looking forward to producing any albums in the near future? I know you worked on Emmy Lujer and Aaron Lee Harris album, uh, but with Colleen Carter as well. I, well, I, right now, you know what I've been, my wife made me promise to focus on doing a solo album, which I've been, so many people have been saying, you should do a solo album for 20 years. And I kind of avoided it, but I was mentioning a little earlier here. I tend to shy away from the spotlight. And so, but, it's like it's, I'm getting up there in the year. <laughs> and it's like, well, if I'm never going to do it, I can't do it. So I've been trying to focus on that until so my time off the road as well. But, I, but I've been working on, and, you know, I mean, I've worked with Timothy B. Schmidt sometimes on his solo stuff yeah. and different things and with different artists, you know, from all over the world. And so I, I'm, you know, but I, I tend to stay pretty busy. I, I'm almost always, I'm off the road, I'm in the studio. <laughs> yeah, I, I had an opportunity to catch Timothy B. Schmidt. I think it was, I think it was last year, maybe the year before here, here in Atlanta. And that was right before you joined the tour. I think uh, it was still just Hank Linderman on uh, guitar. Um, right. But it's still an amazing band, but I wish I caught you on that. Oh, and then yeah. I saw, I saw, yeah. you, you, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. Oh, I was just going to say, Hank was great. Hank has become like, Kind of my, my one of my closest friends for sure, and and they 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 are just that great that whether I'm there or not, it's <laughs> fine. You know, but I'm always happy to be there whenever he wants, and whenever I can do it. Yeah. And I was also watching, I think it was maybe earlier this month or last month, a video that Mike Campbell does. He does the, the oh. bathroom uh, jams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've done a couple of those with Mike. <laughs> that's, that's fun, too. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty amazing. So in terms of your solo work, you, you don't have a time frame yet, or have you recorded yet? I, 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 I'm, 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 uh, I've been working on it. So it's kind of, it's, it's fairly well along. It's not, I don't know when exactly I'll finish it, but I'm really trying hard. I, I hope to finish it uh, by before the end of the year and maybe it'll be out there either late in the year or early next year. That's my goal. Okay. Then we'll certainly, I'll check in with you and check on that. Uh, in terms of the Doobie Brothers EP, is there a time frame for that release? Uh, well, we were going to try to get it out this year, but in looking at the progress, uh, we're, you know, we're looking to have it look, maybe hopefully get some mixes done, uh, in, uh, September or October, 
right? Why not get released? Because again, it's about the kind of a, maybe by the end of the year, but if not early next year. Okay. And uh, you know, so not too far away. <laughs> Great. Sounds good. So we're about 15 minutes in. Is there anything you want to get in? I have, I have two final questions for you. Uh, no, whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Give the boss. Um, and if you don't know, if you don't know off the top of your head for these two questions, I can write your publicist and ask ask her so you can give us some thought. Um, <laughs> okay. In, in terms of your 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 stage guitars and amps, what are you playing now? Uh, I'm I'm actually almost exclusively using I I, I use Line Six here. I use a Line Six mm. Helix pedal board. Okay. And a Line Six very standard. That's my main instrument that I'm doing most of the guitar work in the show with. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't use an amplifier. I'm going direct out of the helix. Okay. And that's that's what's going to the front of the house. But I also am using uh Comfons. I'm using a Variac Stratocam Variac. and I'm also using a GNL uh a command key on some song. Okay. And uh, through, but all of that through my uh, Helix pedal board, and I'm using a, I'm using Steinberger uh, uh, NS design um, violins and a cello, hmm. and um, you know my banjo. I'm using an Epiphone banjo live. Okay. And and again, I think for the violin, for the violin, I'm going. Uh, not going through the helix, but everything else, including the cello and the banjo. On my pedal steel, I'm using a ETF East Texas steel pedal steel, through, and it's all going through the helix. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, and what kind of pedal steel is it? Uh, ETF, which stands for East Texas steel. Okay. All right. And yeah. I go Tango, I go Tango Sierra. Right. Thank you. And you're using inner monitors from the stage? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you could tell me what are your top five favorite albums of all time? Oh my gosh. Well, people, people, top people usually top complain about like that. Jumping around, <laughs> you know, but, but on the list, my gosh, you could almost pick any Beatle album would have to be on the list. I mean, you could probably put all the Beatle albums. <laughs> okay. Uh, but also, uh, I'm a huge Buck Owens fan, so, you know, so many of those, especially the live Carnegie Hall album, okay. best country live album ever in history. Wow. And, uh, my gosh, I love Stefan Grappelli. Oh, really? Uh, mm -hmm. So you could, you know, the violinist, mm -hmm. you know, there again, pick an album. I mean, he never played really any of his stuff with Django or any of his solo work. All great stuff. Uh, but yeah, that was sort of what it's going to call the Evans Guitar Incorporated or the Black Album. But the Evans on Pedal Steel, that's an incredible album. Okay. Uh, Moby Great, their first album, for sure. And you produced one of their albums, right? I produced that by Peter Lewis, who was. Okay. A founding member and you know always in Moby Grape. Anytime Moby Grape is Moby Grape. Peter Lewis, I produced a solo album for Peter uh, a number of years ago. I don't know, ten or fifteen years ago. Got a five star Rolling Stone, you know, magazine by Star Review, and it's a great album. He's an incredible songwriter. Yeah, I had Jack Hempson, who was the writer of Eagle Search Yes. People easy feeling. Tell me that's his favorite album of all time. <laughs> wow, that's so, Yeah. And um, so, yeah. Anyway, so favorite albums, yeah. So I'm, I'm probably leaving stuff off that I wish I would put on, but did I get to, did I give you five albums? Uh, Buck Owens, uh, Stephen Grabelli, Buddy Allman, and Smoby Grape, and Peter Lewis. And the Beatles. Uh, yeah. And the Beatles. <laughs> So, right. yep, that's... Oh, yeah. okay. uh, so, <laughs> thank you for that. Your yeah, people usually get thrown off by that a little bit. <laughs> I mean, did Rhonda Vincent down to the show. You can put Rhonda Vincent down on the list. I will do that. Um, so, I do appreciate the time. I know you're busy with the tour. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, but you can... I, I, you know, 
I know you're busy, and I do really appreciate your time. Uh, and thank you for it. Thank you for the music. I look forward to seeing you guys when you get here sometime. Uh, this, I think it's in the fall. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Well, if, you're, if you get a chance, uh, or if you want to contact me or, or reach out to, to uh, our, our publicist, uh, come backstage, I'd love to meet you too. So that would right. be great. I'll do that. John, take care. Have a great time. Okay. All right, thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> So that's it. That's all the audio for John McPhee of the Doobie Brothers. I did get a chance to see him here in Atlanta and got to go backstage. So it was a wonderful experience. And John's an incredible player, a great writer. Hopefully one day we'll see that solo album he mentioned. Anyway, that's it. Take care.